think you through some of these key features of this J balance cushion. Have you all casted your eyes over the stand of cushions that are out there? And you can see they're in separate order. I've taken the cushions off and I've broken it down. Base foam, fluid sack, inner cover, positioning components, and the complete cover. So you can actually, in your mind, work out what do you need from this cushion, try and understand it a little bit more. But well, one of the big things that we've done is look at the, the well design. We've taken the very good information that came from the J3. When we, when we designed the J3, we looked at anthropometrical data studying the, the width of people's pelvises. And the width of people's pelvises was the measurement between the ASIS horizontally to the opposite of ASIS. Now, in that instance, then, that, that denoted that we had a certain percentage we could understand about people's common pelvic widths. And so we were able to work out that 95% of people would fall into like, three different well sizes, which are sized into the cushion. There's 5% of people that don't fit into those for a certain cushion width. And that is where you get abnormal bone growth. And that's good information coming from hundreds of thousands of people's skeletal measurements when we've analysed that data. So what that enabled us to come up with when we looked at the J3 was the concept of the pelvic loading area. Now the wider cushions, as you increase width, what you'll notice here, as you increase the width of a cushion, you're increasing the lateral surface here. The well size, as we know, is, is predetermined to support the greater trochanters and allow immersion and development for the ischial tuberosities. For the smaller hip width, we have a smaller well size and still moving through the greater trochanters. When you increase the width of the cushion, you increase the natural tissue. When we look at bariatric users, 20 inches wide, they will have the same pelvic loading area as a person that's 24 inches wide, 26 inches wide. The way you get the growth is in the lateral tissue at the sides. In 5% of those cases, it, it will be due to abnormal bone growth, and that's accepted. So with the J-Balance cushion, what we've got is three pelvic sizes, the pelvic loading areas, and they are automatically determined on the order form. So that, in 95% of the cases, that well size is going to work, work well for the client. The bottom line about this, when you look at this, is the prescribers don't need to choose the well size unless they deem otherwise. Just with the J3 cushion, we were able to order increased well sizes or reduced well sizes should we need to if we wanted to control that a little bit more. But across the board, normally it should be fine to use this. We've also, when we look at the, the well design, which you'll notice the difference between a J2, J3, and the J balance, is certainly we've got the introduction now of a real, wear, a real wall at the back of the well. This functions essentially to keep the fluid where you need it, underneath the ischial tuberosities, around the greater trochanters, offering that high skin protection that we were talking about. One of the things that we had with the J2 and the J, J2, J2 T console and J3, was a lot of that fluid migration. And when we got that, the person's pelvis would automatically, there's a risk of bottoming out, driving through the fluid, and if the pelvis wasn't controlled, what would happen is the pelvis would go into posterior pelvic tilt, drive through the fluid, and come up against the pre steel shelf. That then is the, can lead to sometimes instances of pressure sores on this frontal surface here. <coughs> but when we have a little look about the J-Balance, this has been modified as well. It's now much steeper than it was. And this is good, because this actually helps us to keep, one, to keep the fluid where it is, but also it can aid us to keep these steel bones locked down, so to help to prevent people sliding down through the chair. When a person goes into slight posterior pelvic tilt, when they relax for comfort, it can help to keep much more stability on that pelvis. It's a good feature on a chair. But it has to be carefully applied. Now with, the, with that front surface, one of the things that we've got to be careful of, as you can see here, with a steeper wall, when the pelvis does drop back into posterior pelvic tilt and these ischials do come forward, we've got to be careful we don't come through and load the ischials onto the front wall of the dish. With the chair balance cushion, You've got, you've got such a thick amount of foam, if you actually did, in the worst case scenario, put your knuckles against the front wall of it and push, you'll notice that you, you physically can't reach that very firm layer at the bottom. So it's got that added protection. If a person does happen to move into this particular position, you've got much more protection there. So what insert options have we got? 
Well, from the J3, what was good feedback was we had the air, the option of an air insert, and we had a fluid option. We've still got that with the, with the balance cushion. We've got the, J, the J fluid tripod. Now, this has gone back to an original design of the J2. It's three compartments. The amount of fluid in there is very similar to a J2. And I'll touch upon that in a little bit in a little bit more detail. But one of the main features when you look at that, going back to that old design of the J2, it's got less pleated pockets. The pleated pockets on the J3 was an attempt to try and control fluid migration. But how I asked the question to you, how many times did you, did you find that the J3 still migrated, still moved into the areas where you didn't want it to go? Well this time, having a well looking to contain that fluid now, we can actually get the fluid to displace and actually support and envelop the ischials and those bony promises that say from the coccyx. We've also got the option of a row hole, the air insert. So this can offer us that very high pressure relief. We can offer single or dual valves. The dual valves, as we know, can help to accommodate or correct a pelvic obliquity should we need them for those users with very high pressure relief. It can accommodate those, as those asymmetrical postures. The improved fluid pad design, just looking at this, we're talking about the kneading of that fluid back into place. With the J3, there's lots and lots of individual pleats that you'll notice in there, but when you look at this big fluid pad, within the well, the fluid will automatically migrate. It'll, just, it'll come back to the centre until the person will displace in it, and the fluid will displace. That is what we want out of fluid. <clears throat> When the, J, when the J engineers looked at this cushion, what we really wanted to try and do was, was try and offer a cushion that could offer the very high pressure relief that we would associate with a J2 deep contour cushion. And when we actually designed it, we used the pressure mapping in the rig system to actually try to achieve those readings. Where we see this cushion performing very similarly, but where we see it performing slightly differently is the greater trochanters, where we're loading a little bit more for stability. So in that instance, then, we're getting that high skin protection, but we've got that stability there. So we've got cushion, a cushion that can offer those very good attributes that we've got from the JTD contour, but in a much more stable base. <coughs> we've got that soft foam top layer, you know, so a very white covering. <coughs> this makes the cushion much more comfortable to sit on. It's an open cell foam, and what that means is fluid can actually ingress through that. But well, we can still carve it and work with it, but it forms over the top of the cushion. This is to enhance the comfort, as we mentioned, reduce the, uh, reduce the pressure of the greater trochanters when people are loading through that. I invite yourselves to go out and visit our stand. How will it look? Sit on the cushion yourself. Test it for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. You make your own minds up. Extra skin protection. Because having that very soft foam, it's a it protects the ischials and bony promises from driving through and actually going onto hard structural foam. But it's still modifiable, which is that absolutely key, essential feature that we as prescribers need to make sure that cushion meets users with, with uh, those users' problems. What you notice also is there's positioning components that are, that are optional on this particular cushion. So what have we got? We've got lateral pelvic guides. And these are an excellent features we know. When you sit in a cushion, you can feel how it supports the hips and the pelvis. You've also got the lateral knee and the medial knee uh, thigh guides that you can see there. And all of these products will ship in five complete bits. When I'm out in the field prescribing that for people, I like to be able to change and move to meet my user's needs. We've also looked at the cover technology and looked and thought what works well with this. Well, we obviously consider the microclimate when we look at the fact that that is known as a, as a risk pressure factor, pressure risk factor. We want to try and keep that theme of breathability. And in this, we've got this technology. Well, first of all, we've got the inner cover that you'll notice, that black stretch. That's Dartex, reverse Dartex. So it gives us that two-way stretch. It protects the base foam, that soft white foam from ingress of urine and liquids. It's also white clean, which is easy for us to work with. It's got that special thread that you can see that can actually help to resist water going into it. So it's there to keep that base cushion clean and dry. The outer cover, what we've got three options then. We've got a microclimatic, a breathable one, using the 3DX, the spacer fabric, to reduce heat and moisture from the skin to surface interface. We've got a stretch cover for, to allow greater immersion <coughs> into the fluid, whether that's air, 
or all those adjacent it. We've also got a continence cover as well. And all these, all these cushions have been designed to reduce the surface tension when positioning components are added, so we don't get pulling the material taut. What happens if you need to modify and adjust the cushion out from your assessment? Well, what we can do then is introduce underfills or overfills into each of the fluid sections. We can also use the air inserts to adjust and uh, make the fluid insert, uh, the air insert, adopt the position that we want to to support the pelvis. Now, the most important for me now is coming back to these clinical scenarios and it's thinking, right, how can I use this product to meet these specific goals that are presented, these, these problems that are presented from the client? Now, let's take, a, let's take an MS client, for example. Now, in this instance, we might develop, over time, or well, it's in the middle to end late stages now, a fixed thoracic kyphosis, a posteriorly pelvic tilted, uh, posteriorly tilted pelvis, which is fixed also. So when we look at this user, typically how they present, within the backrest, they're often load here on the backrest, but due to the curve of the spine and the fixed position of the pelvis, their seat position, where they actually contact, is halfway down the seat. How do you manage that? Well, the option that we've got is to modify the cushion to, to address these needs of offering high skin protection, still increasing the pelvic stability, but accommodating that, that, that pelvic position within the cushion. So the option that we've got with the balance cushion is we can actually move the PLA forward, up, from up to three inches forwards. And that concept then allows us to get that, that that dish in exact, that pelvic loading area in exactly the right location. We also, with the user coming down, with the concept of them being pushed forwards, we can also have to increase the front length on the cushion to address the femur length. Well, we can do that, move the pel, so we move the PLA forward and we also increase the front length of the cushion. And that is how we can actually address that particular situation. Let's take a stroke client, for example, who's got a, a flexible pelvic ubiquity. Maybe they're down on the left-hand side between one to one and a half inches. It's a common presentation that we see. So what are going to be our goals? If something is flexible, we're going to try and fix it. So in this instance, we want to try and lift up, increase, lift that pelvis up by introducing extra fluid and, underneath that left-hand side to offer that skin protection. Spread the pressure over a broader area. In this instance, we can look at the J balance cushion, and we've introduced a 20% standard overfill look on the left hand side. For me, as a clinician, I'm thinking, okay, I can work with that, but what happens if I don't want to permanently adjust that fluid sack? Because in the NHS, certainly in the UK, people are used to reusing and recycling products. Well, in this instance, we can also use the J3 inserts, the ubiquity builder pads with a slight bit of modification to the very bottom one, fit the well, trim the back edge, we can actually lay them nicely to achieve that correction that we need. And it's a, it's a modular approach to, to adjust it now, so we can do it through the fluid sac or the introduction of foam positioning components. How else could we do that when we look at that? We could also introduce the air bladder, because the air bladder could also, from a dual valve perspective, correct that. We could actually overinflate on the left hand side to actually level that pelvis back up. So this cushion now starts to give us lots of options. And I love lots of options being a prescriber. The more options that I've got, the more chance I'm going to be able to fulfill, meet those problems to, to meet those client needs. <coughs> so in summary, what makes the ideal seat cushion? I pose this question to you. The answer is as long as that cushion has all of those things that we can meet on that wheel. So skin high skin protection, a cushion that can offer stability, positioning, and also be modifiable, is going in the right direction. I do think there is something as an ideal seat cushion, but I know that certainly from a J perspective, we're certainly going along down that road. Thank you very much. Any questions? Just of the users who are sat in the chairs, can I just get your feedback? I've, I've asked a couple of people that I truly don't know. Could you give me some feedback on those chairs? How does that cushion feel there? Fine. Stable? Good. Do you feel comfortable on it? Yes, it's very comfortable. Good. Excellent.
down, all three of you, without looking down, are you on air or are you on fluid? I think I'm on fluid, I think. Okay. Am I? I think one of you is on, is on air in there. And the, the, the reason that I did that is because when I sit on that cushion, it's very difficult to actually tell the difference between the two because the overriding thing I get is the stability side and also maximise the function there as well. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.